I'm Matzo from Assimilate. Join me on this series with Atomos, Assimilate and ProRes ROM. In this video we'll be looking at creating new online quality ProRes clips from our original ProRes RAW source footage to be used in other third-party NLEs that do not support ProRes RAW natively. So what we'll do is load our ProRes RAW files in, check the debiring whether it goes to the correct color space and gamma, check the metadata and then render them out as high quality ProRes 4x4 XQ clips. And then we keep the original ProRes RAW files for our archive. Okay, let's go ahead, hit import clips, go to our folder that contains our ProRes files. Here we go. Let me quickly remove the empty slots. And let's take a look at our metadata stack where we can see, okay, these clips are 5.7K in resolution, uh, 23.97 FPS and an aspect of, well, just one square pixels. Now I can see our timeline is very much the same, but just to be sure, I'll quickly drag one clip down here. Okay, that's set. And now uh, let's take a look at the image. So if I look at this clip, color effects, uh, I can see, well, let's check the metadata again. Uh, this clip is going to Rec 2020 and Panasonic Vlog. Now, if I go to the QuickTime menu, I can tell Scratch how I want this clip to be debayered. So if I would, well, let's say, want, uh, want it to go to um, Alexa Wide Gamut, well, then I can change that here, but I would have to change it for each and every clip separately. There's a better way to do this. Basically, go to Construct, Command or Control A, select all clips, go to Media Browser, to the Node tab, and in here, we have the same controls, but now they apply to all the clips selected at the same time. So if I want to go to, well, you know what, let's go with Panasonic V Gamut and VLog. Now I have that set for all four clips at once. The other thing that we want to take care of here in the media browser is the metadata. What I do recommend for various reasons is to set a real ID for every clip. This can be helpful when it comes to conforming clips later on. So how to do that? Well, very simple. Select the real ID column like such. And down here, uh, you can put in the content, which can really be anything. If I hit Z, now I have anything in my real ID column. Uh, of course, we don't want just anything there. I will type down hashtag S name, which is the source name from this drop down. Here we go. If I now hit set, we can see we see the source name of each and every clip now also in the real ID column. If you compare that with the name column, you will see it matches perfectly. Okay, after we've done that, let's proceed to the render tab. In the render tab, we have the so-called main output node. That's this one here. And the main output node basically represents your timeline in terms of resolution, aspect, frame rate, color space, and so on. By clicking the plus icon, we can add a ProRes encoder node. And if we want to go to, let's say Avid, we could also add a DNX encoder node in parallel. Now, as you can see, the two nodes look uh, very much the same. Uh, however, the difference is really here in the format settings tab. For the DNX encoder, I can set up the uh, DNX flavor and the number of audio channels here and also whether I want to render an OP Atom MXF or an OP1 A MXF or a QuickTime MOF with DNX HD essence in it. If I select the ProRes encoder, that looks much simpler. I can just select my ProRes flavor of choice. Since we're dealing with uh, pretty high resolution files here, I'll choose the best there is, which is Apple ProRes 4x4XQ and enable all the audio channels needed. Well, let's quickly check, go to the edit tab and to the audio menu, pull this up a little. Okay, we have four audio channels in here, of which only channels three and four are used, but I will nonetheless just enable one, two, three, four audio channels and leave it at that. Okay. Now, the only thing left before we can render out is basically setting up the export file name and path. 
As you can see, generally it goes into this folder, into our render directory, which we have defined here in our project settings. So this is the default that's being taken there. And um, we can of course overwrite that by just, you know, using the browse button and set a different render folder if we want for each output node. But I'll leave it at that for now. The last thing is the file name. As you can see right now, we are rendering a file that's called E06 Shiny ProRes Encoder MOF. Well, that's really not what we want. By default, Scratch uses the name of the output node. And this particular output node is called this. I can also call it my ProRes Encoder node. And now we're rendering a my ProRes Encoder node.mof, which is also not what we want. To really configure this, you have to either click the set button or just right here into this field, like such. And now we can build our output file name using hash codes with all the metadata here. So right now we're using the name of the output node, my ProRes encoder node, which is hashtag name. We could also choose hashtag timeline, for instance, which will use the name of the timeline episode six shiny. Okay, the thing now is this, uh, right now, the timeline name is really the same for all the clips. I mean, all our four clips are in the same timeline called episode six shiny, which will trigger scratch into rendering one big file with all the four clips in it one after another. However, of course, we want to render new online files and as such separate clips. So how do we do that? In most other apps that you know, there is somewhere a checkbox or something that says render as separate clips or individual files or something like that. It's not as easy in Scratch, quite honestly. However, it's a million times cooler and a million times more flexible. What we will do is insert a criteria into our file mask here, and I'll choose the source name again which changes from clip to clip. Oops, let's just make one hashtag. Okay, hashtag as name. So this is the source name of each clip. And if you look at these, here we have the source name of the first clip, which ends with take seven here. The next one is take eight. The next one is take nine and so on. So the source name changes from clip to clip. And so will the output file name and for Scratch to render separate files because the source name will change with each clip. Okay, now we cannot just use one of these hashtags. We could also combine them. Like, uh, let's say I add an underscore and add hashtag, oops, hashtag res for resolution. Or well, what else do we have? Uh, current date. Let's add current date and I can make up completely new file names like that. Now, in reality, usually you want to keep it just as name. However, I can also use the current date with a slash in front of it. And now Scratch will create a folder with the current date as its name and render our uh, ProRes 4x4 XQ files inside that folder. And I can, of course, also combine that with just anything like, um, I don't know, let's say editorial slash and now Scratch will create a folder called editorial inside it will create a folder uh, according to the current date and inside that folder it will render our ProRes files. Pretty cool. If I want to, you know, reuse this file mask, I can just copy and paste it or I can create a template here. My fine file mask and add it to this drop down. Now I hit OK go to my DNX encoder, go inside here, choose my fine file mask and hit apply. And I have the same file mask in here. Okay, and then the last thing to do is select our ProRes node. Well, I'll stick to the ProRes node for now. Um, select it and either render it directly or add it to the render queue. I'll just render it directly, which automatically adds it to the render queue. Here it is rendering. Not very fast because I'm working on a very old MacBook from the year 2012, but it's up and running. 
Now the good thing about Scratch is that it renders in the background. So I can just click continue, add a new timeline and import other clips to work on while Scratch is rendering in the background. Okay, that's it for this video. In the next video, we will look at a slightly different scenario where we will create uh, small H.264 preview files for our clients that we can upload. So we will load the progress raw files into Scratch. We will apply looks or lookup tables. We will apply scaling because we won't render our H.264 in the source resolution, but rather HD sized. And we will also apply a burn-in node to burn metadata into the image and then render small H.264 files for our clients to review online. All right, that's it for this video. See you in the next one. Bye.